It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. Oh my God, it's about time for the One Bar and Lepica Show. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Lepicus. I'm a thirsty, thirsty One Bar. How you doing today, One Bar? I'm doing good. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about some under-the-radar Vikings on offense. Each position will give one player, one underdog. Uh, maybe he's not getting enough love. Maybe, you know, there was a sexy rookie that came in. Everybody's talking about him and not paying attention to this guy. So um, that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, and this just might be a surprise guy, too. This might be a guy that nobody's really thinking about. And all of a sudden, wham! He's there. I love surprises that end in wham. Whammo. A great, hey, great frisbee maker. Anyway, so before we get into the under-the-radar players on offense, let's uh, make sure everybody subscribes to our channel. Likes our vids. Very important to us. It makes us feel warm and fuzzy on the insides. It does. It does. But let's, uh, let's hop right into this. What position are we starting at? Well, I think we got to start with quarterback, you silly dog. Oh, God. Well, you know, quarterback, I think this is the one position that may not be worth talking about. But I'll let you start. Well, and you may be surprised to hear this from me, but I'm going to actually give it to Sean Mannion. Um, I overlook this guy all the time. I consider him pretty much the worst backup quarterback you could possibly have. He is. doesn't bring much to the table. Um, but, you know, he's still kind of young. He's, he's been learning. He's been on the sidelines. And uh, I think he has the ability to come in and, you know, maybe not lead the Vikings to wins, but not screw up enough. Just kind of manage the game, let the defense do their thing, rely on the run game, make a couple throws here and there. I think if he was forced into action, he could potentially surprise us all. Well, I'm going to say the complete opposite. I, I disagree with everything you said. I think he was forced into a game. He would do everything he's ever done in the NFL, and then it suck. He is one of the worst backup quarterbacks in the league. But don't get me wrong, I'd love to sit down and have a 12-pack of Red Dog with him. Ooh. Uh, no, he's, he's horrible. Um, I'm I'm just gonna say I'm gonna say Jake Browning because it, I mean we can't say Kirk. I'm not saying Mannion. So maybe Jake Browning just shocks the world and becomes our number two quarterback. Uh yeah, and I, he was actually my second choice on this one. I think Nate Stanley's gotten plenty of buzz. Um if anybody it's, it's Mannion and Browning who no one's talking about right now. Yeah, and they shouldn't be. Um let's uh let's go to a more sexier position. Let's hop into that backfield. Yeah. And my guy, uh, maybe he's yours too, I don't know, but you were always anti this guy, but Mike Boone, uh, I've always liked what I've seen from this guy, even when he was undrafted his first year, was that two years ago? In the preseason, uh, he ended up making the team, and he had some huge runs that year, or that preseason year, and then he came in last, uh, the last game of the season against the Bears, ran for almost 150 yards, had a, had a couple touchdowns, I think, in that game. Uh, violent runner, we said it the other day, uh, He's hard to bring down, and he he's, he runs a lot of power, and he kind of runs mean, and I like that about Mike Boone. And I think given the carries, he could be, you know, an NFL back who – not a feature back, but I think he'd definitely be a number two guy. Yeah, I've warmed up to Mike Boone um, after that uh, fantastic game against the Bears where he was actually playing against, you know, not the third stringers. Um, I'm warming but, up to him, but my guy, I'm going I'm going different direction. I'm going C.J. Ham. Uh he is his career high in a season is seven carries. I think he doubles that this year. I think he sees 14 carries. I think he continues to see more balls in the air. And uh, CJ Ham is going to earn that big old fat contract he got and be a part of this offense that we haven't seen. Well, if he's seen 14 carries, Delvin Cook's a uh, holdout and going to the regular season then. Because <laughs> I, I don't see him getting 14 carries. No way. Not with this depth. 14 carries, right, eight touchdowns. Let's move on to a much more um, complex position with a lot of guys. So let's uh, go to wide receiver. Who you got? Uh, wide receiver, I am, I'm going Alexander Hollins. Uh, he is the guy that will be pushing for one of those final roster spots when it comes to receiver, but he is a speedster. Um, he, he got some action last year, which is uh, pretty damn good for – He got a lot of action last year. Yeah, he probably did get a lot of action. So I expect his role to continue to grow – um, like I said, he's our deep threat, and I think they're going to give him all the chances in the world. Well, yeah, and that's who I had. And you, you look at the rookies, uh, obviously Justin Jefferson is getting a lot of a lot of buzz right now, and he should. Uh, then you got K.J. Osborne. 
And even Courtney Davis, the undrafted guy, is getting, you know, I, and I'm one of them, but they're ba we're basically assuming he makes the team. We're all forgetting about Alexander Holland. He was active, I think, four games last year, had a couple catches. And what gives him the huge advantage over these rookies is he's been in the system for a year. He made the team last year. He beat out guys like Dylan Mitchell, um, you know, people who are drafted. Uh, I think he even got more targets than, well, maybe he did, Laquan Trello. But he's been in the system. It, these guys, these rookies coming in, especially the undrafted, like Courtney Davis, they've already lost mini camps. They lost, lost OTAs. They're coming in way behind the ball here. Uh, Hollins has a huge, huge advantage over these guys. And if he has another a solid preseason, looks good in camp, he could definitely make the team and be like the fourth or fifth receiver on, this, uh, on this team. Absolutely. All right. Same page there. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, let's go uh, offensive line. All right. Uh, I'll start with offensive tackle. And uh, another guy who that Bears game, he really showed some nastiness. I think he even got a penalty for like jumping on someone's chest after the after the play was over. Ole Udo, uh, the sixth round pick a year ago from Elon, he was pretty much inactive the entire season until that last game came in, and he played with some nastiness. He played with some aggression, and you know there's no way he's not going to take over Brian Mills job. He's not going to beat out Riley Reef or Ezra Cleveland, but he could become that primary backup. Uh, I think on either side, really, uh, you know, surpass Rashad Hill. And 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 B, you know, someone gets hurt, Ole Udo goes in. I think if he continues to progress, that's where he uh, where, where we'd see him this year. Yep, I uh, I got Mr. Udo as well, and you pretty much said it all. One one sneaky play to keep in mind is uh, they could still maybe move him inside the guard, but uh, wherever he plays, I think he will be um, straight up the backup. Yeah, it's going to be hard for him to uh, surpass anybody with you know the shortened preseason we're going to have this year. All right, let's go to guard. Who you got at guard? Uh, guard, I'm going with the Bull Dozier, Dakota Dozier. Uh, you know, Elfline blows. Drew Samy is a question mark. Dozier, at least, everybody knows what we got there, which is a decently average guard. And uh, I think he might surprise people. and might actually get some starts this year. So Dozier is my boy. Yeah, I I'm going again with Ole Udo. <laughs> you know, if he gets moved to guard, hey, why not? This is a wide open competition. Uh, there's really not much ahead of him on the depth chart. I, I don't know how this depth chart even shakes out right now. Pat Elfline, Drew Samir are kind of the assumed starters with Dekosier right in there battling for, but why not Ole Udo? If he gets moved inside, he really can't be any worse than Pat Elfline has been uh, when it comes to pass blocking, especially getting plowed over, or if you're not getting plowed over, you're hanging on for dear life, getting a holding penalty that screws us. So I think he's got a shot. If he gets moved inside, even with a shortened preseason, he might earn a starting job. It would not shock me one bit. Would you rather have Pat Elfland starting right now or Ole Udo standing there backwards? <laughs> I might actually go with Ole Udo to try something different. I think you're right. I think that's the it's right been, call. It's been a year and a half, and I haven't seen any improvement. It's been a horrible year and a half. Uh, let's go to center. Center, I got nobody. There's nobody worth mentioning. I mean, Garrett Bradbury is going to make a big step. And uh, Bush Jones won't, won't – every center on the roster could get hurt, and Bush Jones will still not go on the field. Well, there's one guy, and he's undrafted, and he's Jake Lucina. Jake Lucina, baby. Uh, he won the – what is it? The Remington Award for – Everything. Uh, he's got a ton of experience. Uh, and really, what has he got to beat out? Bush Jones? To be the, the the backup, I mean, well, Pat Elfline will be the backup, but to be the third string, yeah, that's I it. I think of all, yeah, what of all the undrafted free agents, Jake Lucina has got a pretty good sh chance to make the team. Yeah, and he's actually pretty damn yeah. good. He was uh, a very well or a very hard, I don't know what the word is, sought after undrafted free agent, and we all know his oh, dad hard, played he? here. He played college in Minnesota, so it just made sense. But you're right, I'm a little excited about Jake Lucina. Well, that's the thing, you know, it, not that his dad gives him any kind of a, oh. you know, shoe in or anything, but he knows what his dad had to go through, how the NFL works, um, what, you know, day-to-day -day was like as far as practices and camps and all that shit. So that gives him an advantage, and I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a team. Jake Lucina is on the team. Is it fair to say if he makes a team, you will buy his jersey both home and away? After that, Thomas to pay tobacco, I'm kind of staying away from jerseys right now. It's a good move. It's a good move. All right, so that's that's basically it. Those are under the rated radar guys on offense. Uh, you forgot a very important position, tight end. Oh, we oh yeah, you jumped ahead of my list. 
Who do you well, got? I'm... All right. Well, I got last year's uh, surprise. It's Brandon Dillon. This guy was catching everything in the preseason. Um, not, you know, I don't think he's a great blocker by any means, but um, he was one of those guys where, like, at his position, you thought there was no way in hell it wasn't going to be Kyle Rudolph, Irv Smith, Tyler Conklin as the guys they were keeping. But with such a weak receiver group last year, they kept up, they kept four tight ends, and that was because Brennan Dillon just he showed up in the preseason. He catch he caught everything that came his way. Um, if you would have told me at the beginning of this preseason that Brandon Dillon make the team, I would have told you you are a big idiot. Uh, yeah, when he made the final fifty three, I think I had to change my pants twice. I mm-hmm. mean, there was a little bit of a little bit of uh, whispers that it might be possible, but the fact that he actually made it was shocking. Um, I think Tyler Conklin should be a little bit scared going into the training camp preseason because uh, Brandon Dillon, his size, like I said, uh, he catches everything. Um, he he very well could be there. If you can tell me where he went to college, I'll buy you a beer. I'm going with Maryland. You're close. It was Marion. <laughs> Damn it. That's what I said. You were close. You were close. So we're on the Brandon Dillon train. Choo choo. Hell yeah. Love Brandon Dillon. Everything about him. All right, so that's all we got, right? No more positions. Didn't miss anything else. That's it. We'll be we'll be doing the defensive side of the ball very very soon. Can't wait! Can't wait for that. Until then, here's a little fact for you guys. So the KFC Twitter account only follows eleven people: five Spice Girls and six guys named Herb. That's for their eleven herbs and spices.